And this lecture is on congenital eyelid anomalies. And uh, it is within the series of my lectures on ophthalmic plastic surgery. It includes uh, part of basic science in biology and anatomy, of course. And uh, it might uh, be considered as part of the pathology course as well. Now, uh, embryology reminder, the eyes form as optic vesicles from the uh, four uh, brain area of the primary fetus with three layers, the surface ectoderm, the mesoderm and the neuron ectoderm or neuroepithelium. And invagination occurs in this vesicle to become two layer. And apart from the ectoderm, which is the lens placode, separates to become an ectoderm inside the mesoderm with the neural retina, retina pigment epithelium uh, inside from the neural ectoderm. And a part of it migrates anteriorly to form the endothelium of the cornea and the uh, muscles of the iris. At six weeks, two ectodermal folds form to cover the eye, and these are called the lid folds. At eight weeks of embryonic life, these lids or uh, lid folds fuse completely together. And then after that, they separate to become completely separated at birth. Understanding this mechanism is very important so as to understand how. Uh, congenital anomalies of the eyelids occur. This is a section through an animal embryo where the lid folds form at six weeks of intrauterine life. Here are the skin folds in front of the forming eye, not even closing, but they become then completely uh, fused together, but at birth they are completely separated. The epidermal cells undergo a morphogenic change into cuboidal cells, and these cuboidal cells uh, 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 have an advancing edge until a constant connection is formed between the two lids in front of the form cornea. And the cells flatten again and form a sheet of single covering, single layer covering the cornea, and uh, only epidermal layers fuse while the eyelid mesenchyme remains distinct. Lid developmental anomalies. Uh, if the eye folds don't form, we have cryptophthalmus. Abnormalities in fusion lead to clefts, severe coloboma, first arch syndrome, and defective formids. And tissue differentiation lead to eyelid malpositions and dysticiasis because the tissues in the eyelid forms differentiate into the different layers and the uh, lashes. And uh, abnormalities in the separation lead to ankyloblepharon and neuroblepharon. We'll start with cryptophthalmos. What is meant by cryptophthalmos? It is a rare failure of lid differentiation where the skin is completely over the eye, no lids or palpebral fissure. Uh, and this, these may blend with the cornea and the cornea is usually malformed in this condition. If you remember uh, from your study of the first part of the embryology of the eye, there is what's called the sequencing. And by sequencing, we mean that a tissue uh, forms by induction of the fully formed tissue that preceded it. So failure of formation of the eyelids may lead to failure of formation of the cornea and absence of the eye itself. So in this condition, we perform ultrasonography to see what's inside for further management. Uh, so eyelid fold malformation may lead to cryptophthalmos and eyelid fusion lead to eyelid fusion abnormalities, I mean, lead to clefts, severe coloboma, first arch syndrome, and defective forms. And by uh, a lid uh, cleft, we may see 
abnormalities like this, like failure of formation of the lateral canthus. We may find severe coloboma and severe coloboma here due to the failure of uh, complete separation. These are often well tolerated and they involve primarily the upper lid, really in the lower lid. And as long as the eyelids are formed and differentiated, there's an induction for, uh, factor for formation of the globe itself. So there is no congenital keratopathy. Uh, and then we come to the uh, branchial arches. The first uh, branchial arch uh, failure syndrome leads to Pierre Robin syndrome, where there is failure in the complete development of the jaw. Or the Treacher Collins syndrome, uh, where there is abnormality in the formation of the ear lobes and the mid face. The defective fornix may again result from mesenchymal deformity uh, in failure of the formation of the first arch, first branchial arch leading to conjunctival folds. The fornix is maldeveloped. Now we come to eyelid malpositions including congenital entropion, congenital epiblepharon, congenital tarsal kink, epicanthus, and telecanthus. And here we have some terms that we should be well acquainted with. These terms are exorbitism, hypertelorism, and telecanthus. By exorbitism, we mean that the angle between the lateral orbital walls is more than 90 degrees. And this leads to shallowness of the orbits. Uh, in teaching of orbital anatomy, you always say that there is a virtual angle made between the extension of the line of the lateral wall of the orbit, both orbits, and this line here and line there make an angle of 90 degrees. If this 90 degrees is opened, see my video if if like this it's 90 degrees and it goes this way it's more than 90 degrees and this makes the orbit become shallow and shallowing of the orbit leads to protrusion of both eye globes to the front and this is called exorbitism so exorbitism means that the angle the virtual angle between the lateral orbital walls is more than 90 degrees by hypertelorism, we mean the wider separation of the two medial walls. And the two medial walls are known to be parallel. The medial walls become more separated and the eyes become further away from one another. And this leads to what we call hypertelorism. Uh, the telecanthus is the wider telecanthus, wider intercanthal distance with a normal IPD and medial walls. If both walls are of a normal distance from one another, and the IPD, the distance between the two up, uh, uh, visual axes or the pupils roughly, are not big, the lateral canthi this is a difficulty, this is an, an abnormality in the uh, eyelids. The lateral canthi become further away from one another. This is called telecanthus. So exorbitism means the orbit is shallow because of more uh, forwarding of the lateral orbital walls with protrusion of the eye globes. Hypertelorism means that both orbits are away from one another with wider separation of the medial walls. And telecanthus means wider intercanthal distance in the presence of normal orbits and normal position of the globes. Now, hypertelorism is measured in axial scans, where the shortest distance between the medial walls hyperterrorism, which means wider separation of the medial walls, not telecanthus. Normal 16 millimeter at birth, 25 for females, 28 for males. 
if it becomes bigger, you find the orbits more separated with bigger area. And this makes complications in the formation of binocular vision. Congenital entropia usually involves the lower lid where the distal part of the tarsus is rotated inwards, lashes uh, are corrosive against the cornea causing keratopathy and permanent corneal damage is common. However, in young individuals, and we notice this clinically very frequently, the lashes are so soft and there is no corneal implications in this condition till you correct the condition if the patient is younger than one year. Uh, now, the tarsus might be kinked, and this occurs in the upper eyelid. The tarsus might be rotated inwards with 180 degrees fold in the upper tarsal plate, causing corneal rubbing, again, with or without ulceration, and this can be corrected surgically. The epicanthus is a crescentic skin fold, and I've been facing this in all our talks about the eyelids and so on. Uh, uh, these folds are overlying the inner canthi, and there are three types known to us from descriptions in the anatomy, the tarsalis, the palpebralis, and the inversus. Palpebralis were both upper and lower are equal in distance. Uh, tarsalis, the fold is more prominent above, and the inversus more prominent below. Here are examples, and it, these are a part of the well-known to you blepharophimosis syndrome, where we repair either by, either by uh, VYplasty, which I described in the previous lecture, or maybe uh, uh, by double Z plasty. And these are going to be uh, described in detail in the blepharophimosis syndrome uh, lecture. Now, the telecanthus. There is a normal interpupillary area and a normal intercanthal area, but with a Y, um, uh, I'm sorry, interorbital area. Both orbits are uh, at a normal distance from one another, and the IPD is not big, but there is a, a, an increase in the distance between the canthi, the lateral canthi, and this is called telecanthus. This finishes the fusion the, uh, deformities, and we come to tissue differentiation deformities, and we speak about eyelid malposition and dystichiasis. By this dystichiasis, not this trichiasis, no, this tichiasis. Trichiasis is something else. This is this tichiasis. An accessory row of lashes growing from the meibomian orifices or posteriorly. Lashes are thinner, shorter, less prominent, and often well tolerated, as you can see here. This is congenital dystichiasis because there, I'm, I'm saying congenital because there is another variant called acquired dystichiasis where it occurs as a sort of a metaplasia uh, due to one reason or another. Here we are. Uh, speaking about congenital dystichiasis. It is an abnormality of tissue differentiation. Now back to the schedule. We finished eyelid fold uh, malformation by uh, describing cryptophthalmus. I fold uh, fusion malformations. We described clefts, severe coloboma, first arch syndrome, and defective fornix. We uh, described tissue differentiation abnormalities eyelid malposition and dystichiasis. And now we are going to describe a separation of the eyelid abnormalities. And separation include, separation uh, abnormalities include ankyloblepharon and neuroblepharon. Uh, ankyloblepharon means failure of fusion of a part or all of the lid margin. Where, and the lid margins are connected uh, by just a bridge of skin. Mind you, complete failure of separation by the induction sequencing theory leads to 
uh, non-differentiation of the eyelids and malformation of the eye glue. But failure of fusion of the part leads to either one bridge or the condition known as ankyloblepharon filiform adantum, where multiple thread-like filiform fine strands connect both eyelids. And actually, the, the, this is my patient. I didn't see uh, and didn't come across any of these uh, conditions, which is rare uh, description. And finally, we come to ureblepharon, and by ureblepharon, uh, not just failure of uh, separation, but maybe an, a sort of an over separation, enlargement of the lateral part of the palpebral aperture with downward displacement of the temporal half of the lower. You find the lower lid widening laterally. It might be a unilateral condition or a, a bilateral condition. And this here is called ureblepharon to separate it from ankyloblepharon. Other abnormalities that may be encountered in the uh, eyelid formation is the lipodermoid, where an epibulbar developmental growth or multiple growth of normal fat near the lacrimal gland extending between the superior rectus and lateral rectus muscle, muscles and uh, the well-known golden heart garland syndrome with an accessory auricle or auricles. Very well known to us as golden heart and his associate is almost forgotten. So this is the epibulbar dermoid. Epibulbar, uh, uh, I'm sorry, lipodermoid to, to differentiate it from uh, epibulbar dermoid where the dermoid is formed at the limbus. So this is called the lipodermoid and this epidermoid. Thank you very much and I am